Hello and welcome to my channel. I guess they figured out who the boy in the box was and they're going to announce it one day very soon. So I thought I would do a video on it before they announced it. I don't know if you remember about the boy in the box and I have done a previous video on it. Um, it's a name given and you can read this to a three to seven year old boy whose naked extensive beaten body was found on the side of the road in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on February 25th, 1957. He appeared to have been cleaned and freshly groomed with a recent haircut and trimmed fingernails. Although he had ex suffered extensive physical abuse prior to his death with multiple bruises on his body, he additionally found he was malnourished. The body was covered with scars, some of which were surgical, mostly notable, most notable on his ankle, groin, and chin. It is believed by both police and public opinion that the cause of death was homicide by blunt force trauma. He is also known as America's unknown child. Many tips and theories have been advanced in the case, although most of these have been dismissed. Two theories have generated considerable interest among the police and media. They have been, they have each been extensively investigated. The first is that the boy was from a foster home and the other is that he was related to a woman named Martha who came forward in 2002. The child was an unidentified murder victim for decades. However, on November 30th, 2012, 22, sorry, 2022, the Philadelphia Police Department announced that they had identified the child through the use of genetic testing and genealogy and that they would provide a case update in the following week. Sources state that he was the child of a prominent family in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Authorities say that the investigation will use this new information to continue to search for suspects. In February 1957, the boy's body wrapped in a plaid blanket was found in the woods off, I don't know how to pronounce that, Sus Susquehanna Road in Fox Chase, Philadelphia. The body was first discovered by a young man who was checking his muskrat traps. Fearing the police would confiscate his traps, he did not report what he found. A few days later, a college student spotted a rabbit running into the underbrush. Knowing that there were animal traps in the area, he stopped his car to investigate and discovered the body. He was also reluctant to have contact with the police, but he did report that he what he had found the following day. After hearing of the disappearance of Mary Jane Barker, I didn't even think about her. The naked body was inside a cardboard box which had once contained a bassinet of the kind sold by J.C. Penney. The boy's hair had been recently cropped, possibly after death, as clumps of hair clung to the body. There were signs of severe malnourishment as well as surgical scars on the ankle and the groin and the L-shaped scar under his chin. The police received the report and opened an investigation February 26, 1957. The dead boy's fingerprints were taken and the police at first were optimistic that he would soon be identified. However, no one came forward with any useful information. The case attracted massive media attention in Philadelphia and Delaware Valley. The Philadelphia Inquirer printed 400,000 flyers depicting the boy's likeness, which were sent out and posted across the area and were included with every gas bill in Philadelphia. The crime scene was combed over and over again by 207 police academy recruits who discovered a man's blue corduroy cap, a child's scarf, and a man's white handkerchief with a letter G in the corner, all clues that led nowhere. The police also distributed a post-mortem photograph of the boy fully dressed in a seated position as he may have looked in life in the hope that it might lead to a clue. On March 21, 2016, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released a forensic facial reconstruction of the victim and added him to their database. Despite the publicity and spor sporadic interest throughout the years, the boy's identity remained unknown until November 30, 2022 when the Philadelphia Police Department announced detectives discovered the boy's identity using DNA and genealogical databases. So then you can read on more about this, about the foster home. And right here it says he also discovered blankets hanging on the clothesline that were similar to one of the boy's 
one in which the boy's body had been wrapped, and when they discovered him, Bristol believed that the boy belonged to the stepdaughter of the man who ran the foster home, and that they disposed of the body so the stepdaughter would not be exposed as an unwed mother. So in 1998, um, they did further research. So, and you can read this, and I'm going to just scroll down, and it lists other theories as well. And then it talks about the burial. And there's some references. Okay, so then you have who's missing. Daniel James Klein went missing. He's four years old from Minnesota. And you can find this on NamUs right now. He left home with his two brothers, David and Kenneth, to go to Fairview Park in Lindale. And they were never seen again. And they don't know what happened to them. So there are some missing people. And his brothers were... David, who was six years old, and Kenneth, who was eight years old. So they have images that you can see of the boys on NamUs. Okay, there was also Frederick Andrew Holmes, who went missing in 1955 in Gramsville, New York, and he was only a year old, and he had curly hair, and let's see what it says about him. He was last seen walking down the driveway of his rural home at approximately 9 a.m. when he was last seen. Frederick went by the name, nickname Freddy or Tookie, and he was blonde, strawberry blonde hair, and it was blonde and curly hair with blue eyes. So you, if somebody took him, you would see they would probably want to shave his head so you wouldn't be able to tell he had curly hair. And then there's also Stephen Craig Damon. And a lot of people believe that the boy in the box is him. And I'll go, there's the photo of him. And that's the one that I had thought also. Um, Let's see what it is. he was. He was last seen October 31st, 1955, outside a grocery store. He was wearing dungarees, a blue shirt, red sweater, and brown shoes. Stephen has a small scar on his chin. See the scar on his chin and a mole on the back of his right calf. And I thought the boy in the box, didn't he also have a scar on his chin? So. Yes, he did. He also had a scar on his chin. So that was one of the reasons why when I did a video, I thought that was that it might be him because he was young, he went missing, and he had a scar on his chin, and he was missing from New York. And he was two years old at the time that he went missing. So he probably would have been about four years old if he had been the boy in the box. So we'll see. Here's the Charlie Project. It went, the Doe Network's down right now, so as far as I know. Um, so 1955, East Meadow, New York. He was born in 1952. I guess he would have been about five years old then, maybe. Oh, no, because he was born in December, and he was found in February, so... Um, Let's see what it says. He was undergoing treatment for a growth on his kidney at the time that he vanished. Blonde hair, blue eyes, small scar under his chin and a birthmark resembling a mole on the back of his left calf. He has a heel fracture to his left arm. He walked with his toes turned out at the time of his 1955 disappearance. His nickname was Stevie and some counts spell his name Stephen with a PH. He was last seen at a supermarket in East Meadow, Long Island, New York on October 31st, 1955. The establishment was a block and a half from his home. He had gone there with his mother and seven-month-old sister. 
His mother left him and his sister, who was in the carriage, outside the supermarket for about ten minutes while she shopped for bread. When she came out, both children were gone. Stephen's sister was recovered still inside her carriage a few blocks away, but her brother has never been heard from again. In late November 1955, a student at Queens College in New York City wrote three letters demanding money from Stephen's parents in exchange for this toddler's safe return. Each letter asked for a large amount, first 3000 then 10000 then 14000 Steve's parents attempted to comply, but the student turned out to be an opportunist, opportunist who had nothing to do with Stephen's presumed abduction. It was suggested that Stephen might be the boy in the box or America's unknown child, a small boy who was found dead inside a cardboard box in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1957. They were both blonde with blue eyed and both had the same scars, but the unidentified boy did not have a healed arm fracture as Stephen had and Stephen's footprints taken when he was a baby did not match the Philadelphia child. In 2003, the pl police compared the unidentified boy's DNA with DNA from Stephen's sister to make sure and conclusively prove that Stephen was not the boy in the box. The child remains unidentified in spite of a major investigative effort that continues today. Stephen is originally from Iowa. His father was in the Air Force in 1955 and the family was stationed on Long Island. His father left the Air Force a few months after Stephen's abduction and the family returned to Iowa. His parents divorced in 1957 and both of them later remarried. His father still lives in Iowa and had two sons by his second marriage. His mother now lives in Missouri. The case received additional media attention in 2009 when a Michigan man claimed he was Stephen, but DNA tests ruled out this possibility. There is very little evidence available to indicate Stephen's fate and his case remains unsolved. And then you can find him as well on Wikipedia. You will find information. And I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to scroll down through it so you can see. And then you can also find information on MaryHalbergMedia.com about Stephen. I, I don't know if you call it Damon or Damon. And it talks about him. And that's who, when I first looked, that's who I had thought the boy in the box was. But I wonder, that's really just who I thought it was. So I don't know who they're going to come out and say that it was or who it really was. But it's really awesome that they found out who and figured out who it was. Because this has been a lot of years and people are always wondering who it was, especially with it being a child, because it's just so upsetting. So, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. So that if you're interested in this and you want to pause it and read it, you can, in case it's not online anymore. So, and then Morbidology also has information about it as well. So, with a good photo. So, if you're interested, you can go there and read that as well. Anyway, don't forget to leave some comments. And don't forget to pray for his family and his loved ones. And I'm not going to scroll all the way through this one. But... I just thought that was really interesting. So please feel free to leave comments and don't forget to pray for his family. And if you have any ideas of who you think the boy in the box is before they come out with it, um, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a great day. Bye-bye.